In this video, we'll take a look at the SiteDocs web application. This app is available on most major browsers, but for the optimal SiteDocs experience, we would recommend using Google Chrome. The web app functions almost exactly the same as the mobile app, but one big difference is that because the web app is a website and not a downloaded application, it does need a constant internet connection to function properly. To use the SiteDocs web app, Go to app.sitedocs.com to log in with your username and password. If you don't have one yet, you can contact your safety administrator to set up credentials for you. The first screen you're going to see is a list of locations that are visible to you. These locations are how SiteDocs organizes all of the documents that you're signing in your SiteDocs account. So every form will always be tied to the location that you signed them in. If you don't see a location name that should be on your list, you can contact your administrator and they can make it visible for you. If you have a long list of locations, you can use the search bar at the top of the list to find the location that you're looking for. If you have the right permission profile, you can even use the Add Location button to add a new location profile on the fly from your web app. If you ever need to change your location, you can select the GPS pin icon to see this list again and change your location. Now that I'm all logged in, let's look around the home page. First is the to-do list. This is where all of your scheduled items are stored. Under today, you'll find all the scheduled forms and scheduled signatures that are either due today or overdue, so that you can easily access them, fill out the forms, and apply the signatures. Next is Upcoming. This section holds all scheduled forms and signatures that are due in the future. If you want to get a head start on upcoming items, you can do that here. Next is the Shortcuts list. First we have the Follow-up section. This is where all of your pending and finished follow-up forms are stored. We have a separate video all about these forms and how they work, so we'll skip this section for now, but feel free to check out that video in our Help Center. Next is Signed Documents. This holds all of the recently signed forms for your current location. They're sorted by date or by form name to help you find the document that you're looking for. Last is your Logout button. This allows for you to log out or to switch accounts if you use multi-account login. Okay, now that we've explored the home page, let's sign a new form. First, select the form icon from the left-hand side of the app. Now you can either scroll through your list of forms to find the one you want, or use the search bar at the top to narrow down your list. We'll select the form that we want and select New to start a new one from scratch. At the top of the form, you'll see information about your company, including your company name, your location name, and your date and time. Next, we can see the label field. In this case, it's a fillable text box where you can manually enter identifying information, like a job number or a crew name. In other cases, your administrator may have selected a predetermined label field. In this case, the field will not be visible, and you don't need to worry about it, as one of your answers in the form will automatically fill in your label. But in this case, I'll just enter my job number manually. Now let's start filling out the form. First we have a worker name field, where you can select one or many workers that are filling out this form together. In this case, it's just me. Next, we have a long answer box where you can enter the address that you're currently working at, a number only field for an emergency phone number, a select time item to state the time that we started working on the form, a yes no question asking if there are any subcontractors working with us today, and a button to drop a GPS pin for my current location. Finally, I have a button to view a PDF file that contains a handy map of my current work site. The next section of my form is a very simple hazard assessment. It contains some drop-down lists for hazards and risk ratings, and a reminder to flag the hazards for corrective action if I need to. Again, we have a great feature for this kind of thing called follow-up forms, which is covered in its own video in the Help Center, so we'll skip it for now, but please check out that video if you'd like to learn more. 
Lastly, there's a checkbox to indicate if a corrective action was assigned. This section is repeatable, so I can duplicate it and fill out the questions a few times if there's more than one hazard that I need to report. The last section of this form is collapsible, so I can select the arrow on the right side of the title bar to expand the section if I need to fill it out. This section has a simple pass-fail question and an image showing a harness diagram that I can draw on to show any problem areas. Finally, I can even attach a photo of this harness that I'm looking at using the camera icon or the Add Photos button at the bottom of the form. Now that I've uploaded a picture of this harness, I can draw on top of it to show the broken item and even use the text tool to identify what the problem actually is. To finish the form, I can select Sign and Save to add a signature and send the form through to my administrator panel. Once the form is signed, if I have the right permission profile, I can even choose to request a signature from another user on this form. Just select Request Signature and then choose who you need a signature from. Next, choose a due date and time, and then select Schedule to send a request to that user. Please note that if you choose someone without mobile access, they will not be notified by SiteDocs in any way, so you'll have to connect with them in another fashion. Next, let's take a look at the resource section. This is a place where you can keep all of your documents that don't require fillable answers. For instance, your toolbox talks or your safety manual. From here, we can select the toolbox talk that we're looking for. We can open the document and read the entire thing. Once I'm done, I can add my signature, just like a form, and use the Save and Add Another button for several signatures, just in case there's a full crew reading the same document with me. If you'd like to email any of your finished documents directly from your application, you can select the Share icon from the top right-hand corner of the app. This will open a new window with the finished version of your document. From this view, you can email the form, download the PDF directly to your device, or even print it from here if you need to. The next tab is your Workers tab. This is where you can find your own worker profile, and if you have the right permission profile, you can see the names of anyone else assigned to your location as well. When I select my own name from the list, I'm taken to my personal profile. From this page, I can select my information tab and view my contact information and even add a profile photo from my existing photos on my computer. Next, I can select certifications to view my existing certifications. And if I have the right permissions, I can even add a new certification directly from my app and have it added to my SiteDocs account. Lastly, on this page, I can see previously signed to see all the forms that I've signed in the past, organized by date and by form name. The last tab in the app is the chat tab. This is where messages can be sent to other workers in your SiteDocs account. We have a whole video about how chat works in detail in our Help Center, so I won't go into too much more detail here. And that's the whole SiteDocs web app in a nutshell. If you have any questions about our web app or anything else to do with the SiteDocs program, please feel free to reach out to our wonderful support team at support at sitedocs.com.